everyone and welcome back to my channel. Um, I decided that I wanted to buy some new films for my analog cameras so I decided before I did that I should sort through them and see what films I already had and what I needed and which cameras I wanted to use and play with. So this is kind of where I keep my camera stuff um, on my bookshelves. So I do have a box here which has all the actual photographs and negatives and stuff. Um, it's really full, it's really heavy. I don't really need to go through it and I'm not gonna get it down because it's high up and I will probably injure myself. So I'm just gonna look at this box which has cameras in it. And then also there's a bunch of cameras on the top obviously which don't really fit in properly. And then behind this basket of washi tape and tape. Um, there's this box here which actually has the films in it that I've got and I don't think uh, I have very many yeah I've got a few but that's empty that's empty yeah I've got that many so I kind of want to get some more uh, but I'm going to bring down the cameras and I'm going to go through it sort it out a bit and then see what I need so this is all of the stuff that I've brought down some of it's a little bit dusty so um, it's a mixture of films, cameras, and then also when you buy Lomography cameras, so like the Diana F Plus, which is uh, this camera, um, when you buy that, it always comes with like a giant book which has like half a page of instructions and then the rest is like photographs and then just like a backstory, I guess, of the history of the camera and the company, but it's mostly examples of pictures. And it's kind of nice, um, but I don't know that I would necessarily want to do anything with other people's pictures of people I don't know. I don't know, I just it's a bit weird. Um, I don't know what to do with them and they're quite chunky, but I mean it's kind of nice that you get like a little bit extra. Um, but yeah, so I have a bunch of those as well. So, I think I'm just going to go through this box, pull out all the cameras, kind of sort out what's a camera and what's like other stuff, and then see where I'm at. So, here we go. So, when I went through this ages ago, I also checked which ones had film in and which ones I'd tried before to see if I liked them, if I had any issues with them. Um, and I put just little labels with washi tape. So I think I'm going to do that again, just because some of them, the labels might have come off. Um, and it was actually quite useful. So I've got washi tape, which I got in Japan, my cute Japanese washi tape. Pen and notebook for all my labels. But um, these ones that I've just pulled out all seem to be correctly labelled up. I'll just double check. So this is the Minolta Auto Pack for 70 and it does not have a film in it, so that's correct. This is the Pocket 110. What is this? It's a Boots camera. I don't think I know the proper name of this, apart from it just being a Boots camera. Um, the labels have not tested, so I'm assuming that means I've never tried it and there is no film in it. Um, so that's correct. And then this one, which comes in a little case, is the Everflash Le Click Telephoto 308. Has lots of names going on over there. Also doesn't have a film in it. Um, that They're quite easy to see in actually as to whether or not there's a film in, so that's good. Um, so those labels are correct. These three are all 110 cameras. So they take 110 film. Uh, 110 film is really easy to use. You can just, you click it in, you don't have to worry about winding out the film. And you can actually take it out halfway through the roll and replace it with a different type. So you want to do like colour and then replace it with black and white halfway through. It's dead easy to do and you only actually lose one frame because one frame will be exposed to light and will be ruined, but you don't ruin the entire roll of film and you don't have to go through the whole roll of film. That being said, it is harder to get hold of it does tend to be a bit more expensive and I don't think you get as many frames on the roll um, and then it's going to be a bit harder to get developed. Um, at the moment though I'm having to send all of my films away because obviously we're in lockdown at the moment. Oh yeah when I'm filming this anyway I have no idea when I'm going to post it. Um, so I don't, I can't get to the shops because they're shut but also Boots that I used to go to um, no longer does in-house development so 
it just turned out that I was sending everything away anyway online. Um, but the place that I go to is pretty quick and reliable, so it's not that much of a problem. Um, but yeah, these three all take 110 film. I haven't used them for a while. <clears throat> I've had mixed results. Like I said, I do like using the 110 film. Lomography do make their own 110 film that's um, pretty good, but it's expensive. You can get 110 film online, but it's pretty much all expired. And then I just don't like the results with one with expired film. But I was never 100% sure if it was the film that was the problem or if it was the cameras, because they are really old. I think they're all from my sister for her wedding. When she got married, she bought a bunch of um, analog cameras and then she just gave them to me after the wedding. So I think that's where these all came from. Um, so I think I need to order some 110 film because I don't have any um, and I would like to use these again. So 110 film is now on my list. I'm gonna make a note of that. And I also want to um, check my old photos that I took with these cameras um, to see which camera I like the best. So this one's not been tested, so I could try this one out. And then this one and this one, I have used both. Um, and I can't remember which one I like the best. <clears throat> so back in here, there you go. Right, my other cameras. So I've got my Lomography ones. Let's see. I think these are all my Lomo ones. So I have uh, two Dianas. So this is the Diana F Plus. So it has the option to have a flash attachment, which I didn't buy because I was being a cheapskate. These are the cheapest, or some of the cheapest. Um, analog and lomography cameras that you can buy and they're about 30 35 pounds something like that and the flash adds on quite a cost and i was buying it because it was cheap basically so i wasn't going to get the flash this is the one that i've been using recently so i know that there is a film in it which also for some reason is written upside down um, on the sticker and it's halfway through so that's correct labeling that's fine and um, this does come with a lens cap unfortunately it's not attached to the to the strap or the camera in any way. So I immediately lost it pretty much as soon as I got the camera and it's somewhere in the sand dunes of Death Valley National Park in America. Um, so since then it's been unprotected. Um, this is the Diana Mini, which is a super cute, tinier version of the Diana F Plus. I should say the Diana F Plus normally would take 120 film, which I did use a couple of rolls of. But again, like the 110, it's harder to get hold of, it's a bit more expensive, you get less images on the roll, and it's harder to get developed. So I bought a 35mm back to go on the back of it, which means that it uses now 35mm film which is just easier to get hold of. It's a bit cheaper or you can get it cheaper. It depends obviously what kind of film you buy. Um, and it's potentially easy to get developed. But like I said, because I'm having to send everything away online anyway, at the moment, it doesn't make a ton of difference. So I think I kind of want to try putting the 120 back back on this and um, take using 120 film. But it does occur to me that I have no idea where that 120 back is. So, I'm going to put that onto my list, that I want some 120 film, but I also need to find the 120 back for my Diana. Um, the Diana Mini takes 35mm, <laughs> it's super tiny, it's super cute, it is a pain in the arse to use. The Diana, I mean, they're, <clears throat> they're cheap and they feel cheap, they're very plasticky, plasticky, plasticky. <clears throat> um, bodies and they just feel like you could probably crush it with your hand almost um, and they just have inherent problems it seems with the mechanism of winding um the film on so you wind the windy thing i can't know and it doesn't register that you've actually turned it round so you can't tell if the film has wound on or not this mini one is particularly bad <clears throat> i don't know if other people have the same problem 
but it's like the teeth that hold onto the film as it pulls it along um, aren't lined up properly with the holes in the film so it doesn't wind on, it doesn't pull the film on every time so a lot of times it doesn't actually move it on when you wind it so I have gone through a roll of film about three times and not taken a single picture and just had it in here forever not knowing what was happening with it because the um, frame counter wasn't moving on either and I kept having to open the back, exposing the film to light, ruining the frame, potentially ruining the images to try and work out if it was actually pulling the film on or not which was really frustrating um, and it also has the impact of like chewing up the sides of the film I think because the teeth are like not lined up with the holes in the film it like rips them a little bit so when you finally have got through the roll of film, you've rewound it and you take it out you just have bits of like little bits of film that fall out. It doesn't actually affect the images because it's only the it's only chewing the edges but it's quite annoying. Um, these two cameras as well, um, they're not very clear about how far on you wind the film so you do get a lot of um, accidental Okay, really annoyingly the memory card got full and stopped recording and I record carried on talking about all my cameras and didn't film any of it. So I'm going to whiz back through uh, quickly what I was saying about them all. So these are my other Lomography cameras. Um, so with the Diana ones, I can't really, I don't know exactly where it broke off, but I decided to put the mini Diana into the box because I'm not going to use that because it annoys me. I'm going to keep the regular Diana out because I'm trying to use that. Um, so my other Lomography ones, I've got this bright pink Jazzy Fisheye lens um, Lomography. Again, it's got quite a cheap plasticky body, um, but it has the fish eye lens and it actually has a lens cap that's attached, so that's the only reason that I haven't lost that one. Um, this is the first one that I got when I was about, I was still a teenager, I think my mum and dad got it for me for my birthday or something, um, and it was fun and I got pictures back and they were quite cool and fun, but the fish eye thing got a bit old and a bit boring. It is one of the novelty novelty ones and I just... I just can't, like, I I just don't want to use it. I want to, I'd use it once or twice, but then I'd have to take another camera with me as well to take the rest of the pictures. So I'm going to put that in the box. It doesn't have a filming at the moment. All the labels have been done. So the same thing kind of with this one, which is the Action Sampler. Um, so there is a film in that has been in there for ages. I know I used this one when we were in Japan in May last year, and there was already a film halfway through when we went to Japan. Um, so it takes four images in very fast succession, so it splits the final image into four. So it's four action shots, someone or something moving around and then you get the four images of that movement um, in, in the one frame. Um, I did take a whole roll of film, I think, with this camera and then I couldn't get it to when I rewound it, it got stuck in the camera, so I think I lost all of that, that film. I know I've never had any images back, so I don't know how it actually works out. I'm on 22 of this roll, so I'm not sure exactly how many frames there are on this roll of film, but I'm hoping that I'm done with this soon, because like I said, it's been here for ages, and I don't even know if it works or if it is any good. Um... So, I think the problem is that I just don't take very many action shots. I tend to, especially at the moment when we're only really going out for walks in the countryside, I'm taking a lot of landscape shots and it doesn't tend to move very much. I mean, there are some sheep, but they just kind of chill out. Um, it's also really loud, I think, because it takes the four pictures at once and it's just kind of plasticky, like, body and stuff. It makes this really loud whirring sound. So when we were in Japan, um, I tried to take some pictures of monkeys, which I did take pictures of, so I'm hoping some of those have come out. But it was really loud and I was worried about scaring them. Anyway, I'm going to leave this out because I want to use it up and see if it's any good. So I'm going to leave this out. This is my um, final... Oh, no, it isn't. I've got two Lomographies. So this is my La Sardina Lomography camera designed to look like a sardine tin. Um, I really liked this one. It has the option to do purposeful, intentional multiple exposures with this setting right here and it was working really well and it was quite fun, especially if you did a landscape and a portrait um, together. That kind of worked quite cool. It didn't work as well if you did a landscape with another landscape. It just, they kind of blurred together a bit. 
Um, you have two options for your focus. One is like close up, kind of a macro I guess, and then one is like to infinity. And something must have happened, it was working really well, it was fine, and then I don't know if it got knocked or something, but it just doesn't seem to be acknowledging when I change the uh, focus anymore. So I got a couple of rolls back where they were all out of focus, even though I know that I definitely had it on the right setting. So that's put me off using it because it's quite frustrating. So there's no filming here at the moment and there's a focus issue. I'm going to put it back in the box to use at a later date. And then this is the Constructor uh, Lomography Camera. This is a floor model from a shop that we, that I used to work in and this was like the display um, floor model. It is a camera that comes in like a kit that <laughs> says it's for like age 12 up and is apparently like super impossible to put together. Um, someone else made this one and then when we finished stocking them I got to take this version like um, home. I've never tried it, it's never been used, it's never been tested, it's covered in dust and the lens looks quite dirty. I have no idea if it even works or how you get it to work or what you're supposed to do with it. Um, so I, I should try it one of these days but I just am not really convinced that it will actually work. So it's going to go in the box for now. So then the other cameras that I've got, so this one is another one where it's kind of a novelty very much like a novelty cheap toy camera. It looks really cheap, um, it sounds and feels very cheap and plasticky. I got it online somewhere, Amazon or something. I don't even know what brand it is. It just says Image Fusion Split Cam. So it has a shutter that you manually open and close and you can open the bottom half and take a picture and then open the top half and take a picture. So the whole point is that you can have one half of one image with the other half of another image. So you could put the top of someone's head on the bottom, with the bottom of someone else's head, if that makes sense. Or you could have the top of someone's head with a landscape underneath or something. You know, it, it's supposed to be novelty, wacky, fun. Um, I don't think I've ever, like, been able to get it working and now I can't even really get the back open. So, I don't even know if it's, usable at all. It was quite cheap. Um, so it's not got any filming at the moment and it has never been uh, tested and I think I kind of want to try it out but I, I need to just I think put it back in the box for the short term um, and use my other cameras up a bit. So then the last ones. So this one is my Bayret um, camera it's from Germany in like the 60s it was really good really reliable quite different in design and everything from the Lomography ones it is metal mostly metal body it's heavy it's clunky it's chunky it's awkward to carry around with you there's no strap or anything it came with a full case which included a strap to carry it with and also some protection for the lens which is completely unprotected at the moment um, and it actually screwed into the bottom of the camera base um, but that um, just seemed quite like chunky and awkward to use you had to like undo it entirely to kind of take the picture and stuff and I didn't really get how that would work so I just didn't use the case for it um, and that worked kind of okay this one has actually now fallen to pieces because all the like the little screws came out and the body just kind of fell apart which is very frustrating and disappointing because I really liked using this camera um, so I'm going to keep it and the screws in the hopes that one day it can be fixed um, but at the moment it's not actually usable so it's going to go back in the box and then this one is the Select L Agfa camera um, similar kind of look to the Bayret and I know I'm probably pronouncing these all wrong and um, this is also a German one from probably around the same time the mid to late 60s um, and this one I have also been using a lot again it's heavy and chunky again it came with like a full case which I never use so it's probably not very well taken care of um, there is a film in here I just finished using a film and I so put a new one in when I'd finished that film so I haven't really taken any pictures as far as I can remember with this 
on this roll but I use this a lot I have been using it a lot and I think I'm gonna leave it out because it is one of my go-to cameras but I do want to focus on my other cameras for the time being um, it's very reliable although I never I just I can't I'm incompetent and I can't figure out what all the like how to do the settings so I always get that wrong anyway I'm gonna leave that one out and then the last one Last but not least is my little Canon Ixis. This is an electric analog camera. So it is electric and, um, will it work? No, it might need a new battery. So because it's electric, it needs a battery. I cannot figure out how you actually turn this thing off. So it just wastes the battery down. The batteries do seem to last for quite a while though, to be fair, but they are like funny batteries. They cost like eight quid or something. Um, to replace. It also takes APS film which is advanced something system film um, which is really easy to use like the 110 you just like click it in um, and you don't need to faff around and you can also take it out again without ruining the film should you wish or um, need to um, but again it is awkward to get hold of and it's more expensive um, and so I, I just never have like a stock of APS film. Um, this little camera as well gives you the option to add a title or a message onto your pictures. So you've got I love you, thank you, season's greetings, happy birthday and congratulations and you can also have those in German if you want as well. Um, I've never used that option because I don't want any of those messages on my pictures. They're just odd. Like, I just don't know why you'd want to put like... Oh, I don't know. Um, I, yeah, it doesn't... I've never tried them. Um, anyway, so uh, I do like this little camera though. I've got some good pictures back from it from when I've been on holiday. It's light. I mean, it's heavier than perhaps you'd expect, um, but it is obviously quite small and it's very compact. It fits in your pocket super easily. Um, so I think I want to get hold of some APS film and possibly a new battery for it if necessary. So APS film is on my list. So I'm going to leave this one out. Um, so, looking at my film supply quickly, um, what I realised was that I have these Ilford black and white ISO 400 films. I actually got those by mistake thinking that they were colour, but um, I think Ilford ma mainly do black and white it seems. And I got them from when I went to Japan and then was really disappointed that all my film was black and white that I'd taken, but I did manage to buy some colour ones whilst I was there. I also have these ISO 100 black and white films and then this ISO 50 colour film. Um, Cine still not tried that. I think I'll need a really bright day for ISO 50. Um, so I have five 35mm films and that's it, four of which are black and white. So I want some more colour 35mm, I want some 110, 120 and APS. So this might end up being kind of expensive. And then I just for some reason have a collection of empty film canister containers and this empty film canister where the film was taken out and it got ruined. So I don't know why I have all those and why I keep them, but they're in there. Um, and that's it. So I also had the manuals and stuff. I already went through them. There's not that much exciting there. Like I said, Lomography always give you bunch of books and stuff when you do your order so that's why there's like a little pile there but that is the kind of finished box um, I have this like film holder uh, which I never use so that can go in there as well and that's it um, so it's going to go back on the shelf and, and then I'm going to do my film order now that I've done this clear out so this is how the shelf looks now that I've got it all tidied out um, we'll see how long it stays like that um, so the films are in that box, I've got the cameras that have been put away in this colourful box and then these four cameras are the ones that I've got on the go at the moment. I've also got this little like toy camera that's actually a toy that I got in a vending machine in Japan and that's the first thing I bought in Japan. <laughs> this little keyring which is like a teeny tiny version of the uh, Diana um, which is as crumbly made as their actual cameras because it like fell to pieces and then this like wooden like prop I guess a uh, camera that I put together that my dad got me so I've just got that there as a display so anyway that is the end of the video please give me a like if you have liked the video and subscribe to see more